but what I want to say is that up. Let's do that again. <laughs> do you want to do that again? <laughs> right here. <let's>... Alright, so hey everyone. Hey um, guys. We're going to be doing some question. Well, qu it's like a question and answer episode. Um, Shane put it out to um, all your supporters. Where, where did you put this out? So I never put it out. So what we, what I have done is created questions based off the last time we did this. So oh yeah yeah yeah. So I forgot to do this, but anyway, um, by the time you are watching this, we would already have been. Oh, sorry, we already have made our way to Madison, oh, well, Wisconsin for the most part. Um, so, uh, so obviously if our timelines don't match up, you see a back setting of our, our porch and it doesn't line up to where we currently are, that is why. Um, <laughs> okay, I think they can figure that okay. out. So, um, first question that Shane came across um, in his scavenger hunt for questions was what are we most excited about leading into the games so for me personally I think the f the f the days leading into the games are always just very exciting the emotions and uh, you know everyone's excitement is just through the roof because this is something that is an annual event and something that we obviously dedicate every day to and uh, and it's finally here so that excitement the the anxiousness just all those emotions are really heightened in the days leading up to the games and it's also a day where we I guess reconnect and also see people that we haven't seen for in 12 months or you know in in months prior yeah so I think on on my side of things certainly a little different uh, oh no so I think there's a few carryover things like seeing people I haven't seen for a while particularly the coaches a lot of the staff the friendly staff there at CrossFit will dedicate their time um, it's nice bumping into them and seeing them. Uh, I think this year will be def certainly different to last year. We're going to have a fan, so the, the crowds or the stadiums will hopefully be packed again or at least have more people there than we did last year. Mm -hmm. So that'll obviously be exciting, another element of elevation for the al athletes to compete under. Um, heading back to Madison, it's obviously been a little while since we've all been there for the, for the most part. The small things that people probably don't understand is that every year we do this, I'd say people think there's more expectation or pressure put on on tier or on our team or what we're trying to do here. But I, I'd have to say that we've been able to shut that out for the most part. I think we actually put ourselves in a higher position of expectation on ourselves individually or what we're trying to expect or, or what we're trying to do for each other here. Um, I hold that higher standard than I would say whatever some tabloid is saying or, or some some article has said or someone's posted about that I mean don't get me wrong we see it we see what social media can do but for the most part and I'm sure I speak for many athletes but it's not it's more about what the the athlete having a platform to showcase their fitness and what they've worked for and I know on tier situation we've spoken about it for many times now it's like the legacy gets longer the more years she does it obviously but she has more she has more to prove and she wants to prove that and I don't know if I'm, st I'm ripping words out of your mouth or I'm trying to take your next point but I feel the same as well and I'm sure many coaches do and um, I want to make sure that my athletes or particularly Tia is prepared the best that she can be uh, I know she puts in the work and dedication daily um, and I want to make sure that I obviously don't take that for granted and I want to give her the best chance of succeeding or showcasing what she wants to show. Uh, and, and I'm excited for that. I think that's where I'm coming to now. I'm excited to see to see her give that opportunity, to have that opportunity uh, in front of people to execute. I wonder if we're going to witness another Snatch episode like Mac. Snatch? Oh. <laughs> oh, hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Hopefully we have coachable athletes. We'll take that. We'll Noted. See. Um, all right. When are we going to be leaving for the games? Right. So again, depending when this comes out, but for the most part, we're making our way to the state 
of Wisconsin, which is a state. I'm getting I'm getting a <laughs> nod, so it's a state. Uh, we're gonna hopefully fly into Chicago, pick up our hire car, and then make our way to Delafield. We're gonna spend uh, a few days there prior to check-in, and that's just been a tradition of ours to get to the uh, the location of the games days prior. It's just more of a um, a time for us to lock in, right? I guess. Um, yeah, change of scenery. I mean, last year we went to the winery out at the ranch with uh, with Matt and Sammy, and that was awesome. We actually went like what one or two weeks before uh, because of COVID. Yeah, I think for the most part it was like seven, seven or eight days. It was just over a week, just a, yeah. a little over a week. But obviously, with California versus Tennessee weather, uh, we had to acclimate as well. Um, this is a drier, dry heat and also wanted to find some more running terrains where we could run around. Anyway, enough about that, but yes. So, and also, and rewind the clock back a few years as well, uh, traveling from Australia, making our way over to Cal California mm -hmm. or... We'd go to San Diego and train with Josh Bridges. For the most part though, guys, what we try to do is uh, reenact or, or give ourselves to just hone in or lock in on ourselves. Just try to shut out a lot of the things and very, very much be dialed in. Uh, that seems to work for us in the past, and I know a lot of a lot of athletes do that as well, and it's something we've done internationally. Um, what else? Um, okay, and then, oh, this is a good one. What are your expectations this year? No different to any other year. Boom. No. Uh, yes, but I want to elaborate. Uh, for me, like again, I think this is what's crazy as well. Is that obviously the athlete has the expectations of themselves, um, and it's very tangible. They know what to do there. As a coach as well, I think we look at ourselves in some form of an athletic way as well. Because you know what we do is we end up trying to coach athlete to be better. And obviously, if that's the message we're trying to give our athletes, we should be doing it ourselves. And I, for the most part, I believe coaches do that. And that's myself as well. So I've got a few notes that I've written down annually what I want to do better and I revisit them and making sure that I've, I've, I've checked in with them and making sure I'm living up to that plus some more um, and some some of the sorry one of them one of them is for me is uh, just being being more in, engaged or in um, in tune with a lot of the uh, social postings of social media uh, of the CrossFit games um, I will say in the past that I've overlooked that, not overlooked that, particularly last year I overlooked it, right? Uh, the one event that comes to mind is the running event. I should have um, looked at the schedule. Should have, could have, would have. I know, but should have looked at the time schedule of how long that running event was and I overlooked that thinking, okay, fitness is what we're after. Anyway, enough about that. I, I'm going to look at the schedule a lot more and start dialing in on, okay, expectations or time, time domains for athletes to be prepared for and start, sorry, and utilizing that better to my knowledge. Um, just so you know, on my notes, it's a bit neater than what I just said then. Tia, you? Is it that wide? <laughs> <laughs> so my expectations are to win the CrossFit Games. Very similar to previous oh. years, you know, I obviously have very high expectations of myself. Um, but, you know, going through this season, we've been working on so many different things and also um, just trying to evolve as not just an athlete, but as an individual. And um, I'm really excited to just try and showcase that and be able to execute what we've been working so hard on um, throughout the year. And, you know, for me personally, it's about really honing in on my craft and trying to be that much better than what I was the previous year. And um, and I definitely think that the games will be able to provide me that platform to try and showcase that. So guys, what we want to say before we wrap this up, myself, Tia and BC Visions, we are so overwhelmed with the support you guys have shown us, not just through this year, but the years prior to that, even before we had YouTube, the, like, the support we've had I know that um, it goes a long way for myself, obviously for Tia as well when it comes to competition. Uh, we will be looking for you guys out in the crowd, so please if you do, please pull myself up if you can, reach out to Tia. We genuinely uh, love what you guys have done for us. Um, you've given us a platform to speak, a platform to showcase a lot of our, a lot of our journey. Um, you've also 
Well, I think you've also been open-minded to actually trying to learn and, and get to know who we are as people, you know? Um, I think social media is obviously there for everyone to, you know, watch and, and follow along, but you don't truly get to witness the, the actual person and, and what their personality is like. So um, I think YouTube has definitely allowed us to showcase who we are and, um, you know, allow you guys to really get to know us a little bit more personally. Yeah. So for now, guys, take care. All the best. Peace.